Fatimanians. Today, it's November 23, 2023. It's me, Micah Joel Bautista. And it's me, Erika Rubido. And you are watching RBN, Rizal Broadcasting Network. Serving you the hottest and most leading news of the hour, your news, our headline. Morga Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas is an invaluable historical account that sheds light on the early colonial period in the Philippines. Ayesha Gonzalez will give us the update. Morga Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas or events in the Philippine Islands is a significant historical work that offers a glimpse into the colo early colonial period in the Philippines. Written by Antonio de Morga, a Spanish lawyer and a magistrate who served as a high-ranking official in the Philippines during the 16th century. This book provides valuable insights into the Spanish colonization, governance, and culture during that time. The Suces de las Islas Filipinas, originally published in 1609, is divided into two parts. The first part focuses on the history and the geography. The second part covers the Philippines' customs, traditions, and characteristics. Morga's work is considered one of the primary sources of information about the Philippines during the Spanish colonial era. Despite its historical significance, Marga Suceos de las Islas Filipinas has often been overshadowed by a prominent works of the period. However, in recent years, there has been renewed interest in this forgotten treasure as scholars and historians recognize its importance in understanding the colonial history of the Philippines. The book provides a detailed account of the early encounters between the Spanish and the indigenous inhabitants of the Philippines and the subsequent establishment of Spanish rule and administration. It offers insight into the political, social, economic dynamics of that time, shedding light on the impact of colonization on the local population. More gas sucesos de las Islas Filipinas also serve as a window to reach cultural heritage of the Filipino people. It describes the customs, traditions, and religious practices prevalent during the period, providing a deeper understanding of the indigenous culture that coexisted alongside Spanish influence. This is Aisha Andrea Gonzalez reporting. Thank you, Aisha. Examining the varied perspectives of two renowned thinkers, unravel and contrasting viewpoints of Rizal and Morga as they shed light on the nature of the Filipinos and the intricates of Philippine culture. Crystal Racion, for the details. As scholars and visionaries of their time, Dr. Rosario Rizal and Antonio de Morga play pivotal roles in shaping the discourse surrounding Filipinos and Philippine culture. Despite their shared interest in understanding the essence of Filipino identity, Rizal and Morga held remarkably different perspectives on the subject. Rizal, often hailed as a national hero of the Philippines, believed in the potential of Filipinos to rise above their circumstances and break free from the chains of the colonialism. In his seminal work, Noli Matangere and El Polibus Turismo, Rizal depicted Filipino characters who were complex, resilient, and capable of championing their own causes. His portrayal aimed to dismantle the stereotypes imposed by the Spanish colonizers and instill a sense of national pride among Filipinos. On the other hand, Antonio de Morga, a Spanish historian and former official in the Philippines, presented a more condescending view of Filipinos in his work, Successos de las Islas Filipinas. Morga's perspective, influenced by the prevailing colonial mindset, depicted Filipinos as inferior and uncivilized beings. His portrayal perpetuated stereotypes and reinforced the notion of Spanish superiority. By examining the disparate interpretations of Rizal and Morga, a richer understanding of the complexities of Filipinos' identity emerges. While Rizal championed the notion of equality, self-determination, and cultural pride, Morga's perspective mirrored the biases and prejudices of the colonial era. In today's modern context, the clash between these two perspectives serves as a reminder of the importance of critical thinking and the need to challenge prevailing narratives. Understanding the historical context and the different lenses through which Rizal and Morga viewed Filipinos and Philippine culture allows us to appreciate the strides made in embracing diversity, inclusivity, and decolonization. As we delve deeper into the study of Rizal's and Morga's viewpoints, it becomes evident that their differing perspectives continue to shape the ongoing discourse on Filipino identity and culture. By engaging in a comprehensive analysis of their works, we can gain a more nuanced understanding of the complexities of the Filipino experience and contribute to the ongoing efforts of nation building and cultural preservation. That's the story. I am Crystal Rakia. Back to Micah. 
the Asian Filipinos possess a well-equipped army and navy, showcasing their advanced warfare skills according to the 8th chapter of Morga's history. Despite being disarmed by the Spaniards, the natives were able to defend themselves against pirate raids, highlighting their bravery and military capabilities. Mayor Chris Paglikawan will tell the story. The history of the Philippines before Spanish colonization is often overlooked or misunderstood. However, a closer look at the Council of Morga, a Spanish chronicler, shed lights on the advancement of civilization and military powers of the pre-Spanish Filipinos. Contrary to the popular belief, the Filipinos were not defenseless before the arrival of the Spaniards. Morga himself acknowledged that the islands had arms and were able to protect themselves against pirates from the south. However, after being disarmed, the natives become vulnerable to pillaging by pirates, leading to various insurrection. Morga's historical text revealed that the ancient Filipinos had a well-equipped army and navy, complete with artillery and other implements of warfare. Their prized weapons such as the Crisis and Campilans were admired for their magnificent temper and rich demasinating. Specimens of their coats and mail and helmets can still be found in European museums, showcasing the remarkable advancement in this industry. It is important to note that the term conquest may not accurately describe the Spanish occupation of the Philippines. While certain regions like Cebu, Panay, Luzon, and Mindoro can be considered as not having been conquered, the term only apply in its broadest sense. The islands came under Spanish sovereignty and control through compacts, treaties of friendship, and alliance for reciprocity. One crucial figure in so-called conquest was Salcedo, the grandson of Legazpi. Known as the Hernando Cortex of the Philippines, Salcedo played a pivotal role in establishing peace and friendship with the Spaniards. His intelligence, honesty, talent, and personal bravery won the admiration of the Filipinas. He even saved Manila from the Chinese corsair Li Ma Hong. Salcedo's untimely death at the age of 27 marked a loss for the Filipinas, as he was the only encomendero to leave the majority of his position to the Indians of his encomendia. Morgan's account challenges traditional narratives surrounding Spanish colonization in the Philippines. It not only highlights the advanced warfare skill of the pre-Spanish Filipinos, but also shed light on the complexities of the so-called conquest. By revisiting and reevaluating this historical text, we can gain a deeper understanding of the Philippine rich and complex history. Mark Chris Pagdikawan, your story, our headline. Thank you, Mary Chris. Don't change your channel. We'll be right back with more news after these reminders. Mommy, who is Dr. Jose Rizal? He is our national hero and he died for our country. If I died for our country, I may become a hero. Am I right, Mommy? Of course not, baby. You can be a hero by your own small, kind way, like helping those in need. Okay, Mommy. I'll be more kind and helpful. Be kind and be a hero of our country. A friendly reminder from this station. Now we're back. The Spanish conquest of Cagayan, exploiting rivalries for subjugation. Correspondent Alaris Martin, people. In the early days of Spanish colonialization, the conquest of Cagayan proved to be a challenging task. However, the Spaniards found the fortunate circumstances that would lead to their success, the rivalries and jealousies among the people. According to the historian, the Spaniard took advantage to the rivalry between two brothers who were chief in the region. Captain Gabriel de Rivera, a renowned Spanish commander, played a crucial role in the conquest. Having gained fame in previous raids, including the raid on Borneo and the Malacca coast, Rivera became the first envoy from the Philippines to address the needs of the archipelago to the King of Spain. One key aspect that enables the Spaniard to subjugate the people of Cagayan was the revelation of an early conspiracy by a Filipina, the wife of a soldier. Her information exposed the plans of the, Pamil of the Manila and Pampanga for her chief, leading to severe consequences of many involved. Interestingly, the Filipino of that time had remarkable skills even in difficult art like iron working. The construction of the new stone fort in Manila required the casting of artillery, which was carried out by an Asian Filipino. This individual was, was recognized for his expertise in cast cannons even before the arrival of the Spaniard. However, it is noted that the modern-day Filipinos have are not as advanced as their ancestors in various fields. As the Spanish presence grew in the Philippines, relationships with other countries were established. China, Japan, and Cambodia maintained connections with the archipelago at that time. 
However, in more recent times, this relationship have faded, with no natives from Japan and Cambodia visiting the Philippines for over a century. The interference of religious order in the institution of these lands is believed to have played a role in the decline of this relationship. The Spanish colonialization also led to the construction of various structure in the Philippines, showcasing the native culture. Shipping were, ships were built in the islands, exemplifying the skills and craftsmanship of the Filipinos. However, in this present day, the shipbuilding industry has diminished with the focus of smaller crafts and coasters. These historical accounts shed lights on the com complexity and dynamic of the Spanish colonialization in the Philippines, the exploitation of rivalries, the advanced skills of Asian Filipinos, and the interaction with other nations all contributed to shaping the history of the archipelago during that time. This is your correspondent, Alaris Martin, your news, our headline. Thank you, Alaris. In the attempt made by Rodriguez de Figueroa to conquer Mindanao according to his contract with the King of Spain, there was a fighting along the Rio Grande with the people called the Buha Hyenas. Here's Alexia Albania for the update. In the rich tapestry of Philippine history, there are countless stories of bravery and resistance against foreign invaders. One such tale is that of Ubal, the Filipino warrior who managed to defend Mindanao against the Spanish conquerors. As Rodriguez de Villaroa set out to fulfill his contract with the King of Spain, he encountered fierce resistance from the Wubahayas along the Rio Grande. Led by their celebrated General Salonga, these warriors were relentlessly to protect their homes and their people. Quirino, a Jesuit writer, recounts a remarkable anecdote that showcases Salonga's fearlessness. During a choice for a marriage ceremony among the Mindanao Principalia, young Spaniards, fueled by bravado, fired at Salonga's feet. However, the heroic warrior remained unfazed. Passing on as if the bullets had no effect on him, it was clear that Silonga was not a fool to be taken lightly. Argensola, another historian, sheds light on the name of the Filipino who ultimately killed Rodriguez de Figueroa Ubal. Just two days before the fateful encounter, Ubal had hosted a banquet offering a beef animal as sacrifice. It was during this gathering that he made a promise to rid his land of the Spanish invader. True to his word, Ubal took action and successfully eliminated the leader of the Spanish forces. However, the Spanish historians of the Philippines in their various accounts David Ubal as a traitor. They failed to acknowledge the fact that the Buahayan people were defending their own country and had neither provoked nor declared war against the Spaniards. The indigenous people were faced with a powerful invader with superior weapons and armor, rendering them defenseless against the muskets wielded by the Spanish soldiers. To brand Ubal as a traitor for defending his homeland is a gross misinterpretation of events. Furthermore, it is important to recognize the devastating impact of the Spanish colonization on the Philippine people. The introduction of European civilization in the Pacific Ocean often marked the beginning of death and destruction. Magellan Dee, the pioneer of European contact with the islands, burned houses, small crafts, and even killed seven individuals over a stolen boat. These acts of violence were carried out with the same naturalness that civilized societies engage in activities like hunting and fishing. The Spanish historians conveniently overlooked the context behind the ruptures between the Filipinos and the colonizers. It is crucial to remember that in most cases, it was the actions of Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch forces that led to conflict. The Filipino were forced to defend themselves against those who sought to impose their will through force of arms. Had the crimes committed by the colonizers been committed by the islanders, the Spanish historians would have undoubtedly portrayed them as treacherous. Moreover, the suspicion of the Japanese regarding the religious propaganda of the Spanish and Portuguese missionaries were not unfounded. There were political motives behind the missionary activities, as evidenced by Spanish missionaries serving as spies in the Molokas in attempts to conquer the Cambodia under the guise of conversion. The sacrament of baptism was used as a tool to subjugate the inhabitants of the Philippines, making them subjects not only of the king of Spain but also slaves of the encomenderos, churches, and colonies. Alexa Albania, RDN News reporting. Thank you, Alexa. Examining the historical disarming of the Philippine inhabitants and its impact on their ability to defend themselves against bandits and criminals. Queen Babon will tell the story. The history of the Philippines is intertwined with various events and policies that have shaped the nation and its people. One such aspect that deserves attention is the impact of colonial rule, particularly the Spanish occupation on the Philippines. Morgas observations from centuries ago still hold true today, shedding light on the long-lasting consequences faced by the country. During the Spanish colonial period, the Philippines experienced both economic exploitation and loss of sovereignty. The Moluccan Wars aim at gaining control over the spice which Moluccas proved to be the drain of the Philippines. 
The wars depopulated the country, bankrupted the treasury, and offered no compensating benefits. The Filipinos who contributed their labor to build and equip galleons faced tremendous sacrifices without reaping any substantial rewards. The disarmament of the Filipino inhabitants left them vulnerable to the attacks of bandits and tulisans. This fatal system still prevalent to some extent today. Highlights the need for a comprehensive approach to ensure the safety and security of the peaceful rather country folk. While steam vessels have put an end to a piracy from outside, the lack of arms among the local population remains a concern. The disarming of the Filipinos still not exposes them to potential harm but also perpetrates a cycle of banditry. The inability to defend themselves encourage criminals to exploit the situation and prey on the defenseless. The government's um, efforts to restrain these bandits often fall short, leaving the Filipino population at risk. Understanding the historical context of the disarming of the Filipinos allows us to address the existing vulnerabilities and work towards a safer society. So, by acknowledging the lessons from history, we can strive for better policies and practices that prioritize the security and well-being of the people. It is crucial to break away from the past and ensure that the mistake of the past will not continue to pledge the present and the future of the Philippines. Win Alien RBN, News for your news, or your RR Hadlet. For the recap of today's hottest news, I'm covering the legacy of Morga's successors de las Islas Filipinas, Rizal and Morga interpreting Philippine culture through different lenses. The misconceptions of Spanish conquest in the Philippines, the Spanish conquest of Cagayan exploiting rivalries for subjugation, the untold story of Moro piracy in Philippine history, and the disarmament of the Philippines, a legacy of vulnerability and banditry. This has been Micah Joel Bautista. And this is Erica Hubilo. News with no bias. News with no exception. This is RBN, Rizal's Broadcasting Network. Your news, our headline.